I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. The Holy Ghost was given for to counter the great the, the churches and pastors and false prophets that were going to rise up and just deceive people. I'm going to ask the engineer to take me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Let's start at about verse 3 or 4, somewhere thereabouts. I know I said 12 earlier, but roll me back to verse 3. Here, here let me explain something to you. The, uh, since the, the Bible has been canonized uh, years ago, nearly four centuries ago now, and the... Um, the King James Version is one of the more trusted versions. I don't trust any other version than that. There have not been any additions since the book of Revelation, but it doesn't mean that the hand and the power of God has ceased. Jesus, in his prophecy of Matthew 24, we're going to read in just a moment, and in John, the Revelator's prophecy in the book of Revelation closes out, if you will, the parchments or the writing or the books of the great book called the Bible. But there are prophecies that are within the prophecy of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, and there are prophecies within the prophecy of the book of Revelation. Now, if we had some time and I had more opportunity to do so, I'd love to be able to hold a seminary class on the prophecies. Since the book, the Bible has been closed, the book of Revelation closes out or canon out the Bible. But there are prophecies yet to be fulfilled in the book of Revelation. It is full of prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. Are you clicking with me now? Are you, are you, you see what I'm talking about? Even though there are no more books to be added to the Bible, there's a ton of prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled in the book of Revelation. And then, of course, in, the, in, the, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, in the prophecies that he gave. So that's how we can tell you that the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. There's one other thing I want to say. I've been meaning to say this for quite some time, is that the failure, the fact that there's so many false prophets and people not having the Holy Spirit, knowing that people like Billy Graham or people like uh, Kenneth Copeland, all of these people are just false prophets. Many of them are actors and entertainers. That... The, uh, the angels of God are going to have to come and, and fight against the devil because the people are not willing to stand up and fight against. So you'll, the prophecies in the book of Revelation is that the angels are going to have to come and fight the devil because the, you won't find strong men and women of God that are willing to fight the devil toe to toe. Now, there will be some. That's a prophecy that's within the book of Revelation. But what I want to do now, let's go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, and begin to look at the prophecies that are within the book of, 20, of, of Matthew, of the prophecies of Jesus and the tribulation. But these prophecies are given understanding that the Holy Ghost will be sent and has been sent to lead and to guide you into all truth that you will not be able to know that you'll sit up in churches and think you're hearing the truth. You'll sit up in meetings and think you're hearing the truth. You will sit at your mama's feet while she's shelling peas and think you, she, you're hearing, hearing the truth. But your mama don't know the truth. Her mama didn't know the truth. And the mama before her didn't know the truth. That's why you got to have the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to, you don't get the Holy, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You can't get the Holy, you can't get the truth from those who don't have the truth. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit of God because you can't get the truth from the Pharisees. You can't get the truth from the chief priests, Nicodemus. You can't get the truth from them. You got to be born again. You got to have the Holy Ghost. All right, Mr. Engineer. So let's begin to look at some of the prophecies. Now, the Bible is closed. Is that right? The books are closed. No more books added to the Bible. That ain't going to happen. But there are two major prophecies within the Bible that are yet to be fulfilled. And the prophecy of Atla of the New Jerusalem, that prophecy is yet is now being fulfilled in Atla. We'll get to that. We will, we will get to that. The prophecy of the elect 
is, and I'm going to, so let me just, okay, all right. But I'm very excited. First of all, we've had a great day in court today, a great victory. But I'm also very excited about this teaching. I'm very excited that God has allowed me to be able to make such a teaching. Jesus said in verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto them, the first thing Jesus said about, let me put this in context now, do some contextual, if you will, exegetical, if you must, uh, criticism. That is to say, to the examination of the, of the word of God. The first day after Jesus said that the temple will be torn down and that he didn't tell us at the El Oscar Mosque that the Muslim will build a mosque where the temple once was. But he said it would be. And then from there, the, the first thing out of the mouth of the Lord and Savior Jesus is that they're going to be they're going to be they're going to be people that are going to deceive you. That's the first thing. They're going to deceive you. And he puts it this for verse five. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name. Kenneth Copeland comes in the name of Jesus. Billy Graham comes in the name of Jesus. George Meyer comes in the name of Jesus. T.D. Jakes comes in the name of Jesus. Griff Blow Dollar comes in the name of Jesus. All the rest of them, TBN Ministry, all of them come in the name of Jesus. They all come in the name of Jesus. They're all swinging the Bible. He said, for many shall come in my name, saying that I'm Christ. Benny Hinn will say it right now. But they're going to deceive you. That's the first thing Jesus said. It is the, one of the greatest warnings of postmodern time, of post crucifixion time. The greatest warning, the greatest warning is that these preachers are going to deceive you. They're going to come in the name. They're going to say Jesus is Christ, but they're going to fleece you. They're going to deceive you. They're going to bamboozle you. Many shall be deceived. That's number one on the priority. So what was most important for Jesus to tell us of, in terms of the prophecy? Are we going to get healed? Are we going to get married? Are we going to get a business deal? Are we going to get that new house? No, 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 no. What was most important is there are going to be these buildings with preachers in there that are deceivers, that are hustlers, that are liars, that are thieves. And then you can have people like Robert Jeffers, for instance, down there at the First Baptist Church of Dallas. He may not necessarily be a, a prosperity deceiver, but he's probably more deceiving than Benny Hinn because he's down there pushing that pre-tribulation false prophecy and lie. So they're going to come in many colors, and, but the Holy Ghost has got to lead you to the truth. The Holy Ghost. So number one, number one is that they're going to come a whole bunch of these people, going to build stadiums full of people, but they'll deceive us. Next thing that's most important, and you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. The Sabbath day war, that, and I want to talk to my uh, Israeli brothers. I want them to know I'm an Israeli brother. I'm a, I'm a, if you will, I'm a Zionist. But I want to talk to my Israeli brothers and say to them, y'all need to stop calling that the Israel-Hamas war. Y'all need to stop calling that. You know, <laughs> Israel can't fight this war. And Hamas can't fight it either. You got to you got to call this the war of all my. You got to call it the Sabbath Day War. You no, know, you, 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 you're, you're taking too much into yourselves. Now I'm a Zionist. Israel brothers are my brothers. But you're taking to call it an Israeli Hamas war. That's wrong. And by the way, you know what y'all have done? Y'all have let these people on television, on CNN. I think CNN started calling it that before Benjamin Netanyahu or anybody else. Y'all let these people, these 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 vile people on CNN. These news reporters are more vile than a bucket full of snakes. And they, you can't let them. Get, you can't let them name what God is doing. Listen, Wolf Blitzer. Though he's a, 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 an Israeli, a Jew, you can't let Anderson Cooper. You can't let them name the war. You can't let them do that. This is God. This is about the Lord is the one said that there's going to be this war. 
That's why it's called the Sabbath. They were, now you say, well, Pastor Man, we ain't going to receive that cause you, from you because, well, you know, nobody don't like you because what we did, do I do? Yeah, okay, all right. But you need to, I, I told you, y'all need to put G, you need to put Hashim back in there. Where's the, where's the Tanakh? You, you brothers, you need to open up this Tanakh. And hear what thus saith the Lord regarding this war. You need to open up the Tanakh. You can't, you can't be naming, listen, call it, and, and, and not out of that, but you let the television the news reporters name the war of God. You can't do that. It's the Sabbath day war. It's the Sabbath day war. You let the people tell, tell and let these people on television tell you when there's going to be a victory. You shall have, Jesus said, you shall have wars and rumors of war. That's a prophecy within the prophecy, even though the Bible has been closed. Even though the Bible has been closed, the last book has been written, signed, sealed, and delivered, yet there are literally hundreds of prophecies, not thousands of prophecies within the Bible yet to be fulfilled. And that's my job. That's the job of the Holy Ghost inside of me. Outlaw is a prophecy. Praise Almighty. De demonstrated by the power of the word of God. We'll get to that too. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. All these things are going to happen. But don't, don't let it trouble you. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. I'll talk more about how how to sail stormy waters and don't get troubled. I'll talk more how to face down the giants of the world and don't be troubled by it. I'll talk more about when bombs are falling all around you, how not to be troubled. That's another lesson. Remind me about that and I'll come back and teach that another time. Verse 7. Now these are prophecies and only the Holy Ghost, first of all, what is going to end? The worst thing, what is worse than a war? Listen to me. You listen to Pastor Manning. Listen to your pastor. What is worse than war or the war that's going on now in a, the Sabbath day war is what's going to happen this Sunday in the churches across America and the world. Let me tell you something. The, um, the, 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 the deception that's going to go on in Joel Osteen's church, the deception that's going to go on in Robert Jeffers' church, First Baptist of Dallas, the murder of the spirit of the Holy Spirit, uh, the murder of the spirit of truth, the murder rather, that's worse. That's worse than the war that's going on right now called, which I have labeled by the Holy Ghost as a Sabbath day war. Nation shall rise against nation, Jesus said. This is a prophecy. So you got to have the Holy Ghost to see the truth. You got to have the Holy Ghost. People have been listening to me for years. They know I'm telling the truth, but they don't have the Holy Ghost to be able to make them act on that truth. The truth is clear to them because I have the Holy Ghost but they don't have the Holy Ghost. Cause listen, let me tell you something. You listen to me teach. You hear the truth. You ain't going back to Reverend Catfish. I don't care if your mama went to that church. I don't care if your daddy went there. I don't care if everybody you love still go there. You ain't going back there once you know the truth. You ain't going back there. Once you know the truth. Once you know that they're just there to this, that Jesus prophesied that they're going to deceive many, that a whole lot going to come in matter. Once you know that, you ain't going to turn on T.D. Jakes no more. <laughs> a con man. You ain't going to turn it. Once you know, you ain't going to turn him on no more once you know the truth. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're helpless. They, do what they, they can do to you what they want to do and do it anytime they want to. Well, once you know the truth, the other thing is, once you know the truth, 
You're going to step up and say, Pastor Manning's my pastor. I want the world to know it. I don't care what y'all black people think about him. I don't care what y'all LGBTQ people lie on him and, and persecute him. I don't care what anybody else has done or said. He's a man of God, and I'm standing with the man of God. I ain't standing with no man kissing on another man's rear end. I'm going to stand with the man of God. I'm going to stand with Pastor Manning. Wish you know the truth. You should know the truth. You ain't going to stand with a man kissing another man. You should know the truth. You ain't going to stand with no preacher that tells two men to deep dive tongue kiss one another. Once you know the truth, you ain't gonna, you're going to stand with Pastor Manning. Who you going to stand with? I don't care if you're... If you're, who would that, whoever set up in that Southern Baptist church, it's time to make an exit. Reverend Catfish, I'll see you later. See you later, alligator. Once you know the truth, once you know the truth, my brother, nation shall rise against that. So it's the Holy Ghost, kingdom against kingdom. All this is what you see going on. They're coming famines as well. Pestilences also. And the earthquakes in divers places. Now, I know this is a physical earthquake. Let me just say this parenthetically as well by way of the Holy Ghost. You know, I've been studying the scriptures for a long time. And, uh, you know, I got some people like Schofield, I admire there. Uh, and there's another Dake's Bible and everything. But Jesus spoke about something that the world had not seen very much of. And the reason why the world had not seen very much of is because man had not polluted the earth to the point where it would begin to quake. The earth would not, there, there was a time when the days of Noah, when the depths broke up and the waters underneath the earth rose up to meet the waters coming down out of heaven to drown that crowd during Noah's day that wouldn't hear the preaching of righteousness like y'all don't want to hear the preaching of righteousness coming from me. So God broke up the depths of water down underneath the earth and it met the water falling out the sky and drowned them all. Babies, children, everybody. But earthquakes were not common. They were not common. Earthquakes are a phenomenon that are beginning to happen once man start extracting the natural resources of the fuels out of the earth, creating these pockets within the earth. You could call it a sinkhole is what they've done in many regards and other things that they've done. And, and at one point in time, it's going to come, my brother. I'll tell you right now. All this oil that's been extracted out of the earth, creating all these pockets in the, in, the, in, in the inner core of the earth, once they all start quacking at one time, they're going to be earthquakes and divers places. This is a prophecy. This is a prophecy that was unlike anything that Jesus himself had experienced. But it's coming. All these things are the beginning of sorrow, but there's, whole, there's a whole lot more to come. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. And shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations. Next time you hear, hear people talk, well, Pastor Manning, he, 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 he don't know we black people got to stick together. Uh, Pastor Manning, he ain't for the LGBTQ. Well, listen, I may not be LGBTQ myself, but I think if a man want a man, I think you ought to be in love who you want. What a fool you are. How sick can you be? Next time you hear that, well, we hate Pastor Manning. Well, that, that's a proof of he's, that he's raised up of me. All nations, they shall, you shall be hated. For all nations of people shall hate Pastor Manning. They hate Atla. Hate the work we did. They're all going to hate us. They don't love me. They hate me. What about you? And many shall be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And many false pride. There we go again. Here we go, Billy Graham. Here we go, Kenneth Copeland. Here we go. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Use the word many twice. <laughs> Jesus put double emphasis. How many? I mean, you got to use a word many twice. You already told us that they're coming. That is the most threatening thing. Right? The war that's going on in Ukraine, the war that's going on right now in, 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 in Gaza, 
That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is the false prophet. That, that, that's the problem. That's the problem. No, that, that's what, the, that's what the, the problem of the world today is these false prophets in these big old churches thinking that somehow or another that they can deliver you even to the, to the devil himself and the devil will protect you. But no, my brother, Jesus said, he didn't say one false prophet is going to rise. The other devil, I have to deal with, I'll deal with that Antichrist thing a little bit later on because the church doesn't mess that up as well. Talking about the Antichrist. But here's the verse I, want, I, got, I wanted to mention to you th uh, half an hour ago. Because iniquity, because, and Jesus said, conjuncting, making a conjunction, put joining verse 11 and verse 12 together. And is a conjunction, Esther Bennett. It joins le verse 11 and verse 12 together. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, I said to you early on that the Lord told me to say, Pastor Manny, people that don't thank you, them same people don't thank him. That's right. The Lord said to me, with all the things that you do for people and have done, all the things that they've learned, and yet they haven't turned around and say thank you. All the years, never sent an offering to the church, never joined the ministry, never stood in the critical hours when the church was fighting for its very life. They never gave, raised their hand to help. The Lord said to me, they do the same thing to him. Because in as much as you don't thank me as a pastor, you don't thank the Lord. Now, that's what he told me. You want to argue with him? You want to call the Lord a liar? You want to call the Holy Ghost a liar? Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Go ahead. By the way, let me take the time to thank Sister Charlene McMillan. Hello, Sister Charlene. Hello, Sister McMillan. Thank you, Sister McMillan. Now, as over a year ago, she gave us all those goods, right? But how many times have you heard me? Thank you, Sister Charlene McMillan. Woo! All, that, all those gifts you get. Thank you, Sister Charlene. Thank you. But you see, my friends, you see, your heart is cold. Because you're living in iniquity. You're living, you're surrounded, you're swimming in it, you're taking baths in it, you're taking showers in it. You're sleeping under iniquity and your hearts are wax cold. So when I come with you the truth, your hearts are so cold, you say, I ain't going to thank you. I ain't sending no gift to you. I'm not joining that church and I ain't going to let you tell me what to do. Your heart is cold. It's cold. It's cold because you're showering in iniquity. Your heart is cold. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said because iniquity is going to be everywhere. The love of many, same one that many, many, many that we're, we ought to call, we ought to call chapter 24 the, the many chapter. Everywhere you look, Jesus is talking about many. He ain't just a few people. He's talking about many people are going to be deceived. Many false prophets are going to come. That's right. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And I want to teach the outlaw church, and everybody knows it, how to fight, how to endure, how to hang in there. I'm going to teach, and I'm still teaching, how to endure. And we shall be saved. And this gospel the gospel of righteousness, the gospel of sin, the gospel of judgment, the gospel of the Holy Ghost shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. And these shall, and then rather, shall the end come. So there's a lot more preaching to be done. One would say, well, Pastor Manning, what about uh, Joel Osteen? Is he preaching the gospel and therefore preaching a gospel to the end of the earth? No. No. What Joel Osteen preaches cannot fit into the verse 14. His preaching does not qualify. And let me tell you why. Joel Osteen said, I don't judge anybody. I don't preach against sin. I just try to lift people up. Well, that's not the gospel. 
What T.D. Jakes preaches is not the gospel. They've said it publicly. T.D. Jakes said it to Tyler Perry. They said it to Tyler Perry. I don't judge anybody if they want to be homosexual. I don't judge. I just try to lift people. Well, that ain't the gospel of Jesus that need to be preached to the ends of the earth. That ain't the gospel. I just try to lift people up, try to make them feel better, tell them they're going to have a better day tomorrow. Liar. That ain't the gospel. Until the gospel you hear coming out of Allah and Pastor Manning. It's preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. We got a long way to go. <laughs> the, end, the end ain't coming tomorrow because if it depended on me, because Billy Graham's preaching ain't the gospel. Kenneth Copeland preaching ain't the gospel. It ain't the gospel. When you therefore shall see homosexual, homosexual standing in the holy place, you see them standing there kissing one another at the altar. Whosoever read it, let him understand. Well, we've seen enough of it. Well, I don't judge anybody. I don't think that we're supposed to judge. And I, I just don't, I mean, if you love, love is love, love is love. <laughs> well, you, do you realize how stupid you sound? <laughs> Then let them in, which is in Judea flee into the mountains. So what I want to see, these are prophecies that are within the prophecy. Thank you, Ms. Inya. You can drop them. So the um, Judea is not going to be where Jesus is coming back to. He said, flee Judea in verse 16. Get out of there. Get out of Jerusalem. Get out of there. Let me go back to one other thing. I think it's very important that, that we need to stop letting these television people on news like Anderson Cooper or these, you know, people like Rachel Maida or somebody like that, name that war. That's the Sabbath day war. They did it the right thing during the Moshe Dayan. They called it the Yom Kippur War. Well, that was the right thing. Come on, brothers. Come on, Zionist brothers. Come on now. Come on. You did the right thing, and that's why you were able to get victory within six days because you named it the Yom Kippur War. You go, you, you, you're taking too much of yourself to call this and let these television people name that war the Israeli-Hamas War. You, you, you don't, you're going, you're going to be, get kicked into the sea. You're going to find yourself and all your kibbutzes swimming in the Mediterranean Sea. you got to stop letting these people on television name that war. It's the Sabbath Day War or the Yom Kippur War or whatever, but don't let these tough. Listen, you, you see how you had victory in the Yom Kippur War? Well, Hamas attacked on the Sabbath. They attacked on the Sabbath. Now, it's power in the word. You know there's power in the word. There's power in names. There's power in the name of the is. Let this television, let these Anderson Coopers of the world, let these Chuck Scarboroughs of the world and Mickey Mookie, whoever her wife is, his wife, Mickey Mookie, whatever her name is, Mickey somebody, Chuck, 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 uh, Joe Scarborough, that's his name, Joe Scarborough. Let them name, okay, you can't do that. <laughs> So the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his word. And um, there are few people that have love in their hearts today. That's right. Love, iniquity, people are uh, iniquitized, verse 12. People are iniquitized. And they don't love anymore. Therefore, the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. I thank God that I got him. I thank God. I thank God. You know, all these people, one of the other things that the false prophet did, there's all kind of false prophet here. Just because a church or a pastor is not visibly a prosperity type preacher, all this dancing and running the aisles, you know, that's, that's, that's not of the Lord. Every time you look around, somebody dancing and buck dancing and stinking up the place and you can't see, can't hear what's going on. Well, so many people have been deceived. But you know, people listen to me every day. 
and they uh, don't because they don't. Because if you know the truth, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you know the truth, you don't go back to Reverend Catfoot. I don't care who was there before you. I don't care who went to Reverend Catfish Church and how long they went to Reverend Catfish. But you know the truth. You ain't going back in that barn. You ain't going back in there. You No, 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 no. Mm -mm. So the other item is this, is that you, are you going to ask the Lord for the Holy Ghost? Are you going to ask him? Because obviously you don't have him. And the other thing is that you stand with a man like, like Pastor Manning. It's going to make you a man. It's going to make you a man. Now the world is going to hate you. Well, that's what you expect. <laughs> a little pity party from the world. I know the world hates me. I know the thing. I don't know that. Yes, Pastor Manning. He ain't for the black man. Hey, Pastor Manning. He's, he's against the homosexuals. Yeah, Pastor Man. I know the world hates me. <laughs> you act like I, I'm surprised at that. <laughs> no, let me. I got a song. My, my song ain't, the world loves me, this I know. For the president of the NAACP and Black Lives Matter and LGBTQ told me so. Yes, the world loves me. This I know. For the LGBTQ and the Black Lives Matter and the Southern Baptist preachers told me so. Yes, the world loves me. Yes, the world loves Pastor Manning. Yes, the world loves me. For they all have told me so. No! <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's what I sing. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible told me and tells me so. Yeah, I know people hate me. Don't you think I know that? My family members hate my living guts. <laughs> you don't think I know that? I'm supposed to be hated by the world. And the reason why they hate me because they're in the world. That's why they hate me. What about you? What about you? You're going to stand there. How long are you going to stand there in front of Reverend Catfish? <laughs> in front of Robert, Reverend Jeffers down in Southern Baptist? A Kenneth Copeland. How long are you going to keep on turning on the television and listening to the false prophets, the liars, the deceivers? How long? How long? And the, you know, Elijah went up to Mount Carmel and there was up there in Samaria up there with Jezebel and that uh, Ahab, that old weak husband of hers. And Jezebel, I mean, uh, Elijah killed 850 prophets. 850, and that was in a little old area called Samaria. And they were all false, but it was 850 of them, them. My God, look at what the false prophets are in, in America today. Everywhere you shake a stick, you're going to hit one. There were 850 in a little old town called Samaria. Lord have mercy. Look what's going on in Dallas and Tulsa <laughs> and Houston. And in Atlanta, too. Everywhere you shake a stick. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. So I want to be able to say to my brothers, don't, this, don't let these television people name that war. Amen. Praise Almighty God. All right, I want to just wrap everything up here today. We've given God the praise. Uh, it's been an extraordinary day. It's been an extraordinary season. Um, and I'm just giving him the praise. But I'm going to say this to you one more time. Those of you who don't turn around and thank me, the Lord said, and as much as you don't do it to me, you don't do it to him. That you're creatures of habit. That you really don't thank people. And though you ask the Lord, you always want something from the Lord. 
and you're always asking. That ain't thanking him. That's not praising him. And jumping up and down and singing with some sort of a choir, dancing, that ain't praising him either. That ain't praising the Lord. And so you need to check yourself. The Lord has labeled you as an ungrateful person because you don't turn around and say thank you. You take everything you can get from me and from him and you don't turn around and say thank you. You saw me struggling and still fighting the city of New York and the Mellon Bank and you've not lifted one finger to help me because you're an ungrateful person. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not weeping the fact that you don't thank him either, but he's weeping that you don't thank me, that you don't help me. He sent me to help you, sent me to preach, to teach, to lead, to guide you. And you've rejected me. Same thing they did with Samuel. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for the prophecies that are yet, though the Bible has been canonized, it's been called, all the books are closed, that's it. There are no more books going in the Bible. But there's, a, there's prophecies in Matthew 24 that are yet to be fulfilled. Prophecies in the book of Revelation that are yet to be fulfilled. And one of the beautiful prophecies in the book of Revelation is chapter 20. And it's, it's just extraordinary. All right, well, praise Almighty God. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let you pray about the things that I've said.